Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for taking an hour out of your day to join us to talk about leading with confidence and presence. Feel free to throw in the chat uh, your name, any questions that you have on the topic, anything you want to get out of the session. And there are a few activities built into it, so we'll have a chance to uh, talk in smaller groups and breakout groups later on. So definitely feel free to raise your hand at any point if you have questions. Uh, definitely want this to be uh, interactive here. So the learning objectives for the session are to talk a bit about how to increase your own self-confidence and ways that you can help your team build their confidence if you're a people manager, or even if you're a peer of a team, as well as some techniques for addressing self-limiting beliefs. Lance Armstrong, I love this quote uh, that he has. I'm sure you're familiar with him. He won the Tour de France seven consecutive times. And he talks about in his book that, that the world is full of people who are trying to purchase self-confidence or manufacture it, you know, whether it's through a luxury car or a self-help book. But he talks about you can't fake confidence, that you have to put in the work. Basically, you need to do the reps, you need to build the skill, whatever it is. We all, all of us have areas that we feel more confident in and other parts of our lives and skills that we feel less less confident in. And often that comes down to it might be a newer area for us or an area that we need to put in more reps. So in terms of what you're hoping to get out of the session today, uh, maybe my friends from Digital Nova Scotia can help me with the chat. Uh, I don't see it. I just see your, your faces and the slides right now. But do we have any comments in terms of the chat, in terms of what folks are looking to get out of the session today? Hi, Susan. So the chat's open, Hi. so they can just go into there and post anything. Okay, ready. feel feel free to interrupt me at any time. If there's something in there, let me pull it up too. Uh, managing remotely, I see uh, that can definitely be an area that's new for, for folks, especially if you're part of a global team uh, to help the team with confidence. So that's a great area. Thank you for that. And yeah, feel free at any time, you know, to raise your hand if you have an immediate question in case I, I missed the chat. So Power Up Leadership, uh, we're based in Halifax. Uh, I am a member of Digital Nova Scotia, and we've been in business for six and a half years. So what we really focus on at Power Up is to increase leadership capability, and we do that through one-on-one -on -one private coaching with uh, one of our international coaching Federation credential coaches through virtual and in-person training, as well as through some of our uh, HR services assessments and HR support. So this module on confidence and leadership presence is part of a broader program that we offer as a public program. Uh, actually, we have a cohort starting September 23rd. So if you, you know, have interest in the broader 16 hour program, which is coaching and training, that's certainly something that uh, is open up for registration right now. Our goal as an organization is about creating inspired leadership and our big hairy audacious goal is to create 1 million inspired leaders by 2033. We know that every leader that we have the privilege, privilege of working with potentially may work with hundreds of other leaders and employees in their career. So if we can help elevate their leadership effectiveness, it has a domino effect with everyone that they work with throughout their career. And that really motivates our team. So in terms of the topic today, what is confidence? I really like this definition that confidence is simply the willingness to try. Because I think a lot of people want to feel fully confident before they're willing to take a risk to try something new. And they get stuck in their own head sometimes with fear of failure. And even 
lose the opportunity to learn fully because things are not going to go perfectly. And a lot of us put too much pressure on ourselves and perhaps in turn on our team by expecting perfection. And if something's innovative, if something's new, we need to expect that there's gonna be a learning curve involved in that and that's okay. So it's really about building competence over time through putting in the reps and not expecting to feel fully confident going into a new activity. The stats show us that 98% of workers say they perform better when they feel confident. So in this session, we'll share with you some techniques that if something is newer to you and you're not feeling as confident, there are ways to uh, work with the brain, if you will, to increase feeling more confident going into something new. And it, it certainly does help with performance if you can do that. As far as the confidence cycle and, and how to really build your confidence over time. Again, it's about practicing the skill and going into it with the expectation, almost a beginner's mindset that it's not going to be perfect the first time if it's something new and to digest what went well, what could I do better next time? So uh, you can apply the learnings that you take away as you practice getting the feedback and modifying as needed. And it's a, a circle, a continuous loop, a continuous cycle for all of us to increase our confidence in everything that we do. So what gets in the way for many people? And often it, it comes down to fear. And I like this acronym for fear of false evidence appearing real. So, the big five reasons, and this is from a great book called The Confidence Gap by Russ Harris, but the big five reasons that people lack confidence is they have excessive expectations of themselves, sometimes unrealistic expectations. And often they judge themselves much more harshly than they would a team member, a colleague, a friend. So it's like they're looking at their performance under a microscope and really adding to that pressure of, you know, this wasn't perfect, this could have been better, and then it kind of has uh, a spiral effect sometimes on their performance. Preoccupation with fear of what if this goes wrong? What if this? What if what if this doesn't go right? And it can just really get in the way of action and performance. Sometimes a lack of experience that there's some support, training, knowledge, uh, skill development. So that can add to um, a feeling of uncertainty or lack of confidence and, and lack of, of skill is another reason many people lack confidence. If you think about the first time that you ever used or learned how to use chopsticks, if you're a sushi lover like myself, um, I remember learning later in life, I think I was in my 20s in Calgary, I was in grad school at the time. And I remember uh, learning how to use chopsticks, and it felt so clumsy, almost like riding a bike for the first time. But the willingness to try and to, you know, drop that piece of sushi and try again, that it's that feeling of knowing it's going to be a bit clunky at first. I hear a little bit of background noise. Remodel, and I'm super if, happy that there is a reminder of what it looks like. Can you mute, you can you mute while, yourself? You know, I, I hear about it. Well. Thank you. Someone's getting their kitchen redone. <laughs> it's exciting. Um, so we have a five minute activity for you. This is from Neural Leadership Institute, uh, where I completed my coach training. And it's a confidence and assertiveness worksheet. So the purpose of this is to self assess your current confidence level. So thinking of five things that may increase your confidence, how you would rate your confidence out of 10, where would you like it to be out of 10? five things that might increase your confidence and five things that decrease your confidence. And then brainstorming uh, some ideas around how you could approach increasing your confidence and committing to one, one activity uh, based on the above. So if I could ask my friends at Digital Nova Scotia maybe to create breakout rooms and, and partners, um, if the numbers work out for that or close to it, and then we'll bring folks back at uh, 10.17, give you five minutes to brainstorm us and partners.
Perfect. I can create two to three people. Is that okay? Per breakout room? Just because that would, that, yes, that would be great. And and sorry, folks, maybe take a picture of the worksheet if you have your cell phone. So you have the questions too. Awesome. Okay. Hard folks. to see. It's very small. So it's hard. It's blurry. So it's hard to, to see it on our end. Oh, I can list the questions again here. So it's list sure. five things that increase your confidence, list five things that decrease your confidence, and three ideas you have for building your confidence. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Jody. I will send folks into their breakout rooms.
Do we want to close the breakout rooms now? Do you think that's enough time? Yeah, I told them about a minute left. So yeah, okay. we can close them. I'll bring them all back. Perfect. Thank you. Great, I see folks uh, trickling back into the main room. Looks like I think we have everybody back. Would anyone like to share one takeaway from your discussion in terms of uh, you know, any insights in terms of building confidence that might've come out of your conversations? Or throw in the chat kind of uh, a takeaway. Well, one of the takeaways um, that we bring my video up so I can see you. Um, sorry, there we go. Uh, that we took away uh, was um, positive um, engagement is. Uh, something that increases and builds our experience. Sorry, I have a few screens, so you may see my face. There we go. Positive engagement in terms of, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, in terms of with the um, vendors, with the um, training folks, coaching folks, your, your employees, um, speak engaging with them and talking to them about the products um, can help your confidence as well as help theirs. It's like a two-way street. Um, the self uh, or the positive feedback, you know, get, giving positive feedback on skills or receiving is also another way um, to build or increase your confidence. Yeah, I love that, that we're not on an island uh, on this, that it a feedback loop basically that we right. can reinforce what is going well and just that engagement can really make a huge difference that's that's a great point so we Thank think you. uh also just to add to that that would also apply to networking so when i say networking um like right now today i don't know anybody here but just talking makes me feel a little bit more confident to speak in, in openly and yeah this meeting, you know, so, or webinar. So that, that goes all hand in hand. Thank you. No, appreciate that. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to keep moving along just to uh, ensure we get through some of the other engagement parts of the session, but this may have come up in your conversations as well in the breakout room, but what not building confidence can stop people from doing in the work uh, context, it could be simply sharing their ideas in the meeting, uh, putting their hand up or applying for a promotion, um, taking risks outside of work. Uh, it could be signing up for a dating app if they were uh, single. So all different facets of our life in terms of what confidence might stop us from doing. It usually involves doing something new, taking a risk. And there's a lot of myths around confidence, specifically around self-limiting beliefs. So people often feel like confidence is a feeling and they need to feel confident before they take action. And it's really more of a continuum. You know, you could be very skilled at something and, you know, one day you might feel more confident performing it than another, depending on the context. Maybe the audience is new to you, so you feel less confident, uh, for instance. Another myth around confidence is that imposter syndrome is a bad thing. And often women get painted as having imposter syndrome. Uh, the fact is everyone can have imposter syndrome. 
and often when it's something new that people do feel a sense of that. There's another myth that more extroverted leaders are more confident, and that's not always the case at all. They have fears and self-limiting beliefs, whether you're introverted or extroverted. And finally, the myth that confidence is built when you are winning. I mean, everybody likes to win, um, but you can also build your confidence when you uh, have a setback, if you really learn and mine the gold from that setback. So in terms of imposter syndrome, uh, this study shows that 78% of business leaders experience imposter syndrome. And I can tell you from the coaching work, I've had opportunity to coach uh, around three, I have 3,500 uh, paid coaching hours. So I've worked with hundreds of people over the past year through private coaching. And I often hear it when someone gets promoted, when they're rewarded because of their performance, and then they're in a new role, they have completely new job to learn, a new team to lead and work with, that that's often when it shows up, right? When there's a new challenge in front of them and they, they want to be successful. And that's when they have some of that fear of failure and imposter syndrome. In the chat, feel free to share with the group uh, what parts of your life imposter syndrome might show up for you or what you've observed in the workplace when team members may uh, have some of this going on. And some ways to combat imposter syndrome um, Certainly, if, if you don't already do this through celebrating team wins and really giving the team opportunity, I know on our team meeting at Power Up, we start off sharing one professional and one personal win with each team member. And I like that because it's not 100% on the work front. So we get to know a little bit and connect, I guess, with each other's lives. But also, it's a great way to set the tone for the meeting. Another version of that is the rose and thorn, where you share one positive and one negative. So um, you make it okay to share the challenge as well. Another way to combat imposter syndrome, and this is from Mel Robbins, is to count backwards. You know, if you hear that fear thought entering your head, just five, four, three, two, one, and then you take action and you don't get hooked in the thought that you just kind of interrupt it by counting backwards. Another one is to avoid comparison and monitor your social media usage. Uh, so use social media mindfully that can sometimes uh, trigger imposter syndrome and making a plan. Action is bold. It makes people feel more confident when they take action because they know they're putting in the work and they're doing what they can to make progress. So it's definitely worth focusing on confidence because we know it impacts performance. 98% of workers say they perform better when they feel confident. Another way to uh, really foster confidence is through reframing your mindset. So similar to this image here, a uh, very similar image, half of the people are looking at it through more of a uh, pessimistic lens and the other half are seeing kind of the opportunity. And, you know, we all have negative thoughts. Of course we do, but we can reframe our own thoughts to encourage ourselves to take action. This is one exercise that you can kind of take away um, from this call. It's some questions in terms of how you go about reframing. So for instance, if you have the negative belief that you're not capable of performing a certain task, you can kind of flip that on its head and think about examples of where you might have felt the same way and then you demonstrated you were capable. You can look at situations where you've learned from challenging um, situations and just look at new ways of how you can consider a situation as an opportunity. So some questions to do that might be, how would someone else think about this situation? Am I overestimating how much control or responsibility I have in the situation? Are my thoughts based more on how I feel than the actual facts? Am I focusing more on the negative and not emphasizing the opportunity or the positive? So these are all ways to kind of deconstruct your, your thinking. Uh, another way to do that uh, is from, again, this book, Confidence Gap, 
and there's another book by the same author, Happiness Trap by Russell Harris. And he's known for his act, which is acceptance and commitment uh, therapy. And it's basically just a way of reframing in your own mind. So we get hooked on our negative thoughts sometimes, and this can help us create some distance so it doesn't prevent us from taking action. So he talks about spending 20 minutes a day and just getting really self-aware of your thinking pattern and the analogy of imagine a leaf floating down a stream and each leaf is like a thought. So you're observing your stream of thoughts or consciousness. And eventually you'll notice some negative thoughts uh, in, in that flow. Most people do. And just kind of observing it and commenting when you do notice a negative thought of, oh, there's a judging thought or there's a doom and gloom thought that I'm looking at the super negative or there's a thought telling me not to take action because it's a protecting thought. And eventually when you do that, when you're in the actual high pressure, high performance moment, like imagine a, a dancer who had an audition for a professional production, you won't get hooked by those emotions or negative thoughts as easily because you'll have practiced becoming super self-aware of them and distancing, diffusing yourself from those thoughts. Another way to do it is to visualize text, the words appearing on a screen with the ball bouncing from one word to another and speeding up the words and kind of interrupting the thought pattern or to give the words a Mickey Mouse voice, <laughs> sing happy birthday to it in your mind or out loud. And it's just really diminishing the emphasis and strength you're giving to this negative thinking pattern that might prevent you from taking action and, and make you feel less confident. I have a video here, uh, Dan Martell, he is a business coach, a SaaS entrepreneur, and he talks in this video of the connection between a leader and their team and that your frequency is what you frequently see. You ever meet a buddy and they're like, I need to find a, a new partner in life. They're like, what do you want? Make a list. And they go hot, athletic, entrepreneurial, funny. And then you're like, cool. How many of those things are you? And they're like, uh. it's like, dude, you won't attract that if you aren't that. The world is not as it is, it's as you are. I can go through the world and be grumpy and angry and see everything wrong and just say the world is bad. And I can find a hundred examples or I can go, the world is a beautiful place full of creativity and abundance and then I could find examples of that. That's what I mean when I say your frequency is what you frequently see. Your energetic state of how you show up. So that really emphasizes why it's so important to focus on our beliefs and our thoughts because it does impact what we notice and the action that we take. If we shift a little bit to applying this to the topic of leadership presence and how confidence contributes to that for influencing and engaging stakeholders, I'll share some more content with you on this. So in, in the chat, um, if, throw into the chat what you think of when you think of leadership presence and what that means to you. Would anyone like to come off mute and, and share what their thoughts are? I, I can share in the chat. I'm seeing um, this might be from the previous activity, but uh, having the right expectations at the outset can increase confidence. Yes. What about leadership presence? Uh, throw in the chat what you think of when you think of leadership presence. I see facilitating growth. Anything else? active listening, inspiring confidence, lead by example. Yeah, these are all great thoughts. People look to the leader to see how they're showing up and the energy they're bringing to the room. And that definitely can inspire or diminish confidence. So other ways to define it include um, communicating with that energy, edge and passion, you know, sharing their personal perspective, forging that emotional connection with the team to motivate and engage them, which you can do through your body language, as well as the content in your words. And especially during times of uncertainty and chaos, 
leading assertively, boldly, confidently, even if the leader is completely terrified, um, showing up with that presence and confidence regardless. So part of that involves the leadership presence involves communicating a vision. Uh, Simon Sinek has a great video on ways leaders can do that. We have a vision. And what a vision is, is the ability to see that which cannot be seen. That's why we call it vision. It literally lives in my, our imaginations. I say, imagine a world. Imagine. Close your eyes, imagine a world in which the vast majority of people wake up every single morning inspired, feel safe at work, and return home fulfilled at the end of the day. And what you see in your mind's eye is yourself and the people you love having that experience and those feelings. That is a complete figment of your imagination. It is not real. It is the equivalent of an iceberg. That's what vision is. It's being able to see that which no one else can see because it lies beneath. And when we work with a small group of people who say, I believe what you believe and we will work together. And what ends up happening is a tiny little piece of iceberg pops up. And a couple people go, oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, I'm in. And they join in, and a little more iceberg shows up, and a little more iceberg shows up. And before you know it, everybody goes, it's amazing what you're doing. And you'll say, tip of the iceberg. And the iceberg is huge, and people say, look at all the success you've had. And you'll say, tip of the iceberg. Because that's what it means to wake up every single day to advance a cause. It means that we devote our lives to building what, which, that which has not been built, to advancing what has not been advanced, to showing that which is not seen, and not obsessing with the, excesses, the successes we've had and how much iceberg is above the ocean, but how much more work we have to do. And it all started with a tiny little bit of ice sticking above the ocean. So as a leader, how can you communicate that vision within your workplace over and over and over again until the team, it almost becomes a joke that you are talking about this vision, you know, ad nauseum almost because it will cement itself in the team's mind. And the goal is that everyone is communicating that vision and aligned with that vision. Storytelling techniques, you know, customer interactions, key moments with employees or ways to really make it concrete and specific, and really asking questions to the team of how does that fit with your goals can help them understand and feel confident in the vision as well. So your vision needs to be big enough to fit your people's dreams and goals. And if your company's not growing at a pace that does that, your best talent will, will not stick around. So I'm gonna play this to give you a few other thoughts on, on that front. All of us want people to show up for us, and I think that's actually dumb. It's better for them to be selfishly, inherently wanting to drive towards their goals, not ours, as long as we show them how they're aligned. If you don't have a vision big enough for your team's dreams and goals to fit inside of, you're thinking too small. You won't be able to attract and retain top talent if you don't have that. Every person you interview, I always end with the same thing. In five years from now, you're living your perfect life. Where are you living? What are you doing? How much money are you making? Who are you hanging out with? You need to be able to map their desires to your desires. So you can see if a leader doesn't feel confident to how that might uh, prevent them from fully mapping their organization's desires to their people's desires and even thinking that's a possibility. As far as communication, charisma often comes up when we think about confident leaders and, you know, really being present and focusing on the human connection rather than the job title, drawing people's perspective out, asking them questions, body language, and that strength from vulnerability of sharing something that didn't go well in your own career can really demonstrate that confidence and really connect with people so they feel safe sharing their own struggles and more confident taking risks in their roles as well. So when we think of, you know, well-known charismatic leaders, certainly Simon Sinek, Michelle Obama are two that uh, come to mind. Uh, I think they're probably different leadership styles, but Maybe if you can throw into the chat what 
you think these leaders might have in common when it comes to charisma or any other leaders that you think of when you think of charismatic leaders? What is it about their style that uh, makes them come across that way? in the chat here, uh, open communication environment that might be from before. I see further down engaging, effective communication, even the Donald direction and purpose. Yeah, certainly those are, are great thoughts. Humbleness and confidence. Yeah, they definitely do not need to be mutually exclusive. Inspiring. Thank you for that. Yeah, makes sense. Storytelling can certainly help with that charisma and that clear communication. And when people think of telling a story, it's not so much about recounting a series of events, but it's really the strategic sequencing of key facts and emotions in a story. Um, you don't have to tell it in chronological order always. And, you know, it's been around for as long as we've we've uh, existed as human beings in terms of cave art and how we've communicated. So it, it definitely resonates at a deep level with human beings to share a story. And it creates, again, that trust, that authenticity. Uh, people remember stories better than they do statistics. And it can really drive that behavior change and team confidence of knowing the direction that you're moving in and increasing that emotional connection. Every story should have um, a clear motivator or emotion that you're trying to generate in the audience to persuade them to take a certain course of action or have a certain insight from the story. So what, what makes a story worth telling? Um, certainly focusing on those key lessons learned or a key challenge, or a key moment in your career could be uh, an avenue to pursue. Something that assists with finding your why um, can make for a good story as well. And we're going to move into breakout rooms to really practice applying some of these characteristics of charisma to sharing a story. So this is going to be a partner breakout room where you're going to have uh, a couple minutes to prepare a one minute story um, that you'll try to embed some characteristics of charisma into it. So it can be, you know, it could be a lesson learned. It could be a challenge. It can be any, any story, um, but it's really about trying to communicate that in a persuasive manner um, where you're connecting emotionally with your, your audience. So if we can open up the breakout rooms and we'll bring you back at, uh, say, 10.50, 10.52. Perfect. I'll open those up now for Thank everyone. You.
We're just bringing folks back. They have about 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. Erase. Great. Welcome back, everybody, to the main room. Uh, I hope you had some good uh, discussion on storytelling. Uh, you may have noticed in your conversation that nonverbal communication, and you may have heard something similar before, that it has much more impact than whatever words that you use. They say between 65 and 93% more impact than the actual words spoken, which can be challenging when you think of remote team and just seeing you know, people from the shoulders above uh, conveying that body language and, and nonverbal communication. Um, a way to elevate it, I always think exercise can have a similar impact. Uh, always try to do a workout before doing sales calls to up my energy. But Amy Cuddy, uh, the author of Presence, uh, she has a famous TED Talk on power posing. She talks about kind of tricking the brain by, you know, hands on hips, hands in the air, victory sign, using power posing to really trick the mind sometimes into feeling confident, uh, taking up space. It, it makes a huge difference when you think of first impressions, increases adaptability. Um, here's some examples of different power poses. Definitely check out her TED Talk if you haven't seen it before. Uh, I think it's number three out of top TED Talks. And it really, just the impact of leadership, your leadership brand, when you think of how you show up and communicate confidently, increasing that trust factor, uh, encouraging the team to innovate, take risks, drive organizational growth, and really uh, the impact on brand. I mean, every leader has their own style, their own personality, their own way of showing up and how they want to engage with the team. But Really, I know what Chanel, they call it your hallway reputation, that it's really, you know, how other people talk about what it's like to work with you. And communication has such an impact on that. Concurrency with your values in terms of what you say and what you do. Watch my feet, not my lips, uh, I always like to say, in terms of living your values, that all impacts how, how you show up as a leader and, and gives the team confidence that you're not all sizzle and no steak, as they say. So just to kind of wrap this all up together, if you think about some of your takeaways from this quick session today on confidence, leadership presence, maybe throw into the chat one action that you might take for yourself or an insight that you had from some of the content and what you're kind of taking away from the conversation today. I'm just trying to see the chat. Uh, my menu bar has disappeared. What digital Nova Scotia, do you see anything in the chat you can help me with call out? Yes, we have, that's not from now. Uh, somebody says, I've seen that. I think smiling is amazing. Um, and somebody said, this was a great session. I'm hiring new employees soon and we'll try some of these ideas. I have two things. Perfect. Uh, I also see... This might be from earlier, but that in the environment today, leadership is crucial. Lots of uncertainty, yeah, in terms of the economy, housing, war, politics. So confidence can suffer during times of uncertainty, right? Moment to moment, day to day. So it's something we all have to work on uh, elevating for ourselves and for our team. Because we, if we don't feel it as a leader, it's hard to support our team and feeling more confident to boost their confidence that we kind of put your own oxygen mask on first, if you will. And if you think your team could benefit from going through a module like this, um, this is one of our modules in our 16 hour 
manager leadership development program. We have a free webinar on it uh, on Wednesday, tomorrow, 1 p.m. Atlantic time. It's on the website, powerupleadership.ca, if you'd like to sign up for that. But the program's really intended to help new people managers increase their confidence in leading and aligning a team. And to reduce burnout, because a lot of, if you're a middle manager, you probably feel it, the pressure from your direct reports, as well as from senior management, it's a lot of pressure on middle management. So they need all the support they can get to elevate their leadership effectiveness because they, they feel it from all sides. Uh, we've offered this program privately through one of our private clients, CAA Atlantic, uh, and Sally, who is our finance manager there, was kind enough to give us kind of a testimonial in terms of the coaching sessions that are part of the program. So yeah, really proud of it. It's a 16-hour virtual coaching and uh, training program. The next cohort starts September 23rd. And if you're interested in the topic of confidence, um, you're welcome to follow us on Instagram at Power Up Leadership and just DM us confidence and we'll send you a free resource on a confidence gap assessment that you can share with your team or deep dive into for yourself. Uh, we share all our content for free because we know the value that we add as a company is in the training implementation and, and uh, the implementation support and the coaching. So that's the presentation today. Uh, we have a quick survey. If you want to scan the QR code and give us any feedback on this module, we certainly would value your thoughts. You can follow us on social, uh, on these channels, Power Up Leadership. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Our website is powerupleadership.ca. And thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Susan. That was such a great session. Um, thank you for showing us how we can show up as better leaders and increase our confidence. And I think everybody in the session can take something away from this back to their organizations um, and you. apply it. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Awesome.